क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव सीन प्रीवियसली हाउ टू डू एनालिसिस इन केस ऑफ इंटरनल हीट जनरेशन इन केस ऑफ सिलेंडर्स नाउ लेट एस स्टार्ट सॉल्विंग फ्यू प्रॉब्लम बेस्ड ऑन दैट numericals on internal heat generation in cylinders this was asked in december 13 in mumbai university the problem says a hollow cylinder 60 mm id that is the internal diameter 90 mm od has a heat generation rate of 5 into 10 raised to 6 watt per meter cube the inner surface is maintained at 450 degree celsius and outer surface at 350 degree celsius k of the material is 3 watt per meter kelvin now with this information they are asking us to find out determine location and value of maximum temperature what is the temperature at mid thickness of the cylindrical shell third one is determine the fraction of heat generated going to the inner surface now let us start solving the same problem we have drawn a schematic diagram let us consider this is that hollow cylinder with the internal radius as r1 now let me write down the data they have given us the internal diameter as 60 mm so we can consider r1 as 30 mm similarly the outer diameter they have given as 90 mm so your radius becomes 45 mm so we can write this as 0.03 meter that is r1 and r2 as 0.045 meter similarly the temperatures that they have given is even they have given as 450 degree celsius and t2 as 300 degree celsius this is a problem of internal heat generation and the internal heat generated in this cylinder is somewhere around 500 into 10 raised to 3 or they have given this as 5 megawatt so that is 5 into 10 raised to 6 watt per meter cube the thermal conductivity of the cylinder is 3 watt per meter kelvin now this is the data that they have given and they are asking us to find out determine location and value of maximum temperature so they are asking us to find out r max and corresponding to r max what is t max that is the first thing second thing is what is the temperature at mid thickness so what is the temperature at r mid the third one is the fraction of heat generated going to the inner surface so we can say that q dash of inner now in this case as we have listed down the data and the finds with the schematic diagram we cannot solve any given problem without the set of assumptions so let us list down the set of assumptions so my first assumption is obviously one dimensional heat transfer that is only radial i am going to consider second one is steady state heat transfer and third one is thermal conductivity of a given material is now with this many assumption in our mind we can simplify a general equation as 1 upon r d by dr r dt by dr plus q dash of g upon k is equal to 0 so with this many assumptions in our mind we have simplified our general equation as 1 upon r d by dr r into dt by dr plus q dash of g upon k equal to 0 now we have to integrate this equation twice 
to get to the solution and once we get to the solution we will have two constants c1 and c2 which we need to solve with the help of boundary conditions now if we integrate the previous equation twice we will get to the solution something like this t of r equal to minus q dash of g upon 4k r square plus c1 ln of r plus c2 now again here there are two boundary condition which were required to find out the value of c1 and c2 so my first boundary condition is at r equal to r1 which is 0.03 meter t equal to 450 degree celsius so if i use this boundary condition i will get something like this 450 equal to now q dash is given as 5 into 10 raised to 6 upon 4 into the value of k is 3 this we can negative sign and the value of r is 0 0.03 square plus c1 ln of 0 0.03 plus c2 so let me write this as equation number a similarly if i use the second boundary condition now this is what they had given in the problem statement itself the second boundary condition which is also given in the problem statement that is at r equal to r2 now here we have considered the inner surface of the hollow cylinder now let us consider the outer surface of the hollow cylinder that is 0 0.045 meter the temperature that they have given is 300 degrees celsius now again if i put this boundary condition then this equation will become something like this minus 5 into 10 raised to 6 upon 4 into 3 the value of k is 3 here 0 0.045 square plus c1 ln of 0 0.045 plus c2 now give this equation number b now if i solve these two equations that is equation number a and b i can get the value of c1 and c2 so let us do it let us first of all write equation number a minus equation number b so if i do equation number a minus equation number b i can cancel out c1 over here so the only unknown will be c2 so i won't do the calculation as such here let us straight away find out the number with this we are getting c1 as 1281.79 now let us substitute the value of c1 in either of these two equation a or b let us say putting value of c1 in equation a if i do it so then i shall get the value of c2 again i won't do the or i won't show the calculation as such we will simply write down the value of c2 by substituting the value of c1 as 1281.79 in equation number a we'll get the value of c2 as 5319.69 now we will substitute this value of c1 and c2 in this main equation to find out the general equation of temperature so the final solution of temperature distribution will look something like this t of r equal to 5 into 10 raised to 6 upon 4 into 3 r square plus so this will become my temperature distribution equation since this is a quadratic equation the temperature depends parabolically on variable r now let us look at what all things that they have asked us to find out they are asking us to find out the temperature the maximum temperature to find the maximum temperature we need to find out the differential of this term and equate it to zero so for maximum temperature we know that dt by dr will be zero so if i differentiate the above equation i will get something like this 
if I put it to 0 and then if I solve then the value of r that we are getting is thirty nine point two one mm see try and understand the inside diameter or inside radius is thirty mm and outside radius of the cylinder is forty five so at thirty nine point two one mm we will get the maximum temperature in our case so we have already got the r max here which is coming around twenty nine point two one mm now if I substitute this value in this equation, we will obviously get the T max. So if I put it in this equation, the T max we are getting is 527.59. Now obviously I have not shown you the calculation, but it is pretty simple. We have to simply put the value of R as 0 0.039219 meter in this expression. We will straight away get to the T max as 527.59 degrees Celsius. Now this was my first part. Now let us go for the second part. In the second part, they have asked us what is the temperature at R mid. So we know that R mid, the inner diameter is 30 mm, the outer diameter is 45 mm. So the R mid comes around. 30 plus 45 divided by 2 so that is coming around 37.5 mm so I will consider my R mid as 0 0.0375 meter if I consider this radius and again substitute in the general equation I will get the temperature at R medium so the temperature at mid we are getting is 525.10 degrees Celsius. Now this was the second part. Now let us go for the third part. For the third part, we must find out what is the amount of heat transfer at the outer surface. So the heat transfer at outer surface is obviously I will use the Fourier equation minus Ka dt by dr at r equal to r2 minus k a the differential of the previous term will yield me minus 5 into 10 raised to 6 divided by so the dt by dx which is nothing but the differential of the temperature distribution equation that we have got it comes around this minus the Q generation upon 4 into K into the differential of R square that is 2R plus the value of C1. Now this value here we need to substitute R equal to R2 which is 0 0.045 meter. If you do it so then the number we are getting is the value of K is minus 3 then the area here the value of K is 3 Watt per meter Kelvin. The value of A. A here is nothing but the surface area. The surface area in our case is 4 pi R2 square. So my R2 value is 0.045 square. Multiply by this term. That is minus 5 into 10 raised to 6 divided by 12 into 2 into 0 0.045 plus 1281.79 so if i substitute these numbers in calci then i shall get the value of q dash of out as 2.76 into 10 raised to 3 watt now the similar exercise can be done for inner heat transfer rate in that case q dash in will be minus k which is 3 here the area will be obviously the inside area that is 4 pi r1 square so that is 0 
square and in the same equation we will put the value of r as 0 0.03 dt by dr at r equal to 0 0.03 if you are doing this and if you are solving we will get the value of q dash of n as If you are using this equation and solving, then we are getting the value of Q dash of in that is the amount of heat that is going inward to the cylinder. It comes around 0 0.804 into 10 to 3 watt. Now with the help of this number, we can certainly find the percentage of heat that is transferring in the inward direction. Now that is it in this problem. We have already found the value of T max and R max, we have found the value of R, R mid, that is 37.5 and at that radius, what is the temperature? That is the temperature at mid span of the cylinder and what is the value of Q dash of inner? That is the amount of heat that is going in the inward direction. So all the three parameters are known to us in a given problem and we have seen how to do an analysis in case of heat generation in case of cylinders that is it in this problem thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ekeda subscribe with ekeda thank you